Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dino. Well, it's early April here in Niagara Falls, Ontario, and I'm about ready to get my DR650 back out on the road. But before I can really look forward to a fantastic summer of riding, I need to do a bit of work tuning the ProCycle Jet Kit that I put in over the winter months. So today, we're gonna do that. We'll get the instructions out, I'll walk you through how to do it, and hopefully I can get this running really, really good. First thing I have to do is get this thing warmed up. So sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. Let's see if the old girl will start for us. Like a champ. I am really excited because this is really gonna be the first time I've had my DR650 out on the road in 2022. If you remember, over the winter months, I installed a ProCycle jet kit into the carburetor over the winter months. And I really have not had a chance to try it other than when I took it out, uh, when I put my fuel tank back on. I wanted to make sure the fuel was flowing and that the, the new way in which that I laced up the fuel lines would function properly. What I noticed right away was the bike was running very, very lean. I was a little bit worried about this before I went riding. Now ProCycle in the instructions tells you that you need to either drill holes in the top of the airbox or leave the airbox cover off in order to provide enough airflow for the DR650's carburetor once it's been modified. Now, I decided that I didn't want to drill holes in the top of my airbox. Instead, I created a, a filter out of basically frog skin that covered the airbox door itself. This way it would give an entire open airbox uh, in order to provide that additional air. Now, when I took it out, it idled okay but mid-range and top end, the bike really fell flat on its face. Mid-range especially was really poor. I came home and I put on the factory cover again, thinking maybe it was running a little bit lean. I took it out for a quick ride and sure enough, mid-range and top end performance improved tremendously. I knew I was on the right track. And my thinking is, Without an aftermarket exhaust um, and you know, without any other tuning modifications and running the smallest of the three main jets that ProCycle provided, I probably could get away without even modifying the airbox. And that's what I'm gonna try today. The first thing I'm gonna need to do is set the fuel idle screw. We're gonna do that. Then I'll get it out on the road and we'll test to see if the main jet's good. The first thing I need to do is warm the bike up. So to do that, I'm gonna ride over to the dollar store. I need some batteries for my sound uh, recorder because I wanna see if I can get some good exhaust notes for you so you can hear how the bike sounds. All right, let's get started with that. I'm really, really excited to get back out on the road. It's been a long winter. I cannot tell you how good it is to get back out on my DR650 on the road. Even this short ride was really, really exhilarating. Now, ProCycle suggests that you take the bike out for about a 15 to 20 minute spirited ride. What this means is from corner to corner, I was running it through the gears up to the speed limit, trying to get some uh, temperature into the head and make sure that the bike really is running at what you would call operating temperature before you actually get into tuning the carburetor. This ride over to the dollar store to get batteries seemed to be about the perfect amount of time. It takes me about 10 minutes to get over there, and then uh, there's a slight cooling off period, obviously, when you get the batteries. But then heading back, it works out. I took a little bit of a detour to about a 25 minute to half an hour ride. So I think the bike is warmed up enough that I can start to actually get to the tuning process. Thank you. 
Now that we have the bike warmed up, I am gonna set the idle speed first. That's exactly what the, uh, the sheet says to do. And it all starts with that modified fuel mixture screw that we installed last fall. So what we're gonna do here is adjust the fuel mixture screw that came with the ProCycle Jet Kit. To do this, I'm gonna start the motorcycle. It's, it's warmed up, we rode it to the store and back. And at idle, I'm going to actually turn that fuel screw inwards and you'll hear the idle start to stumble. It'll drop down and get really rough. Once that happens, I'm gonna back the fuel screw out and you'll hear that the throttle or the idle will smooth right out. After that, I'm gonna blip the throttle a few times to see how crisp the throttle is, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, let me get the bike started and I'll get to work on adjusting that. We have the idle and the idle screw set pretty good now. The next step is to determine if our main jet is the right selection or not. To do this, I need to get out on the road. So I'm gonna put on my full gear, my boots, everything like that, because what we're gonna do actually is find a nice level flat piece of road somewhere, run the bike in fourth gear on full throttle till it starts to rev out. When you start to get to fairly high RPMs, I'm gonna roll the throttle back and see what happens with the bike. If the bike starts to accelerate a little bit, that usually means the bike's running a little bit lean according to the instructions. If on the other hand, it just sort of decelerates normally, that probably means the main jet is the right main jet. It's, it's very close at the very least. And if the bike starts to sort of run a little bit flat or maybe even backfire, that means it's a little bit too rich. If you remember back to the initial video where I put the jet kit in, I used the smallest jet that ProCycle provided. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna run pretty good seeing as I have the stock exhaust and now I even have the stock airbox cover back on. I'll try this, I'll see if I can capture it both with some sound and with some uh, 360 video on the throttle to show you what's going to happen. I'm hoping I'm pretty close. I'll be honest with you, the little ride that I did over to get some batteries for the sound meter, it ran really, really well. I was actually quite pleased. It's snappy, it didn't feel flat or anything in the mid-range. I was quite happy with it. So why don't we get to testing now and see how that works out. Once out on the road, I'm going to look for a nice flat, straight piece of asphalt, which I've found here. And when the traffic warrants it, I'm going to apply full throttle. You see it right here. When I get to the top of the rev range, listen and you'll hear it. It continues to accelerate. This is really too lean. Okay, the bike appears to be running lean. So when I'm in fourth gear and wide open throttle, as the revs come sort of toward the top of where they're gonna get their maximum RPM, and I roll the throttle back, the bike continues to accelerate. Now according to ProCycle, that means that the bike is running lean, which is really funny because I have no holes drilled in the airbox and I have uh, the cover plate on the airbox, everything, but it still seems to be running lean. It's not running bad. Honestly, if you, if you gave me this bike and said, go ride it, it rides fantastic, as good or maybe even better than stock, just the way it is, which really leads me to believe 
the stock bike really, the stock carburetor setup is really, really lean to begin with. That means we've got a little bit of tuning to do. Okay, I'm just reviewing the ProCycle instructions here. When I installed this kit, I put the 145 main jet in. I'm guessing I can put the 150 in and see if that improves it. To do that, I'm gonna have to take my tank off, which is a bit of a pain, but I'm gonna have to do it. So I'll drain the float bowl. I should be able to just twist the carburetor is what I'm hoping, pull the float bowl off, change out the main jet and then put it all back together and then take it for another ride and see how that improves the overall performance. A Little bit of a time consuming thing, but I'm willing to try it. It really did seem like it was running lean. Okay, now that we have the gas tank off, what we need to do is actually pivot the carburetor itself to get to the float bowl. I'm gonna drain the carburetor. I forgot to put a, a drain hose on there anyway, so I'll stick a bit of fuel line on. And there is one bolt right down at the bottom there that will allow me to drain out the carburetor bowl. Once that's done, I'm hoping I can just loosen off the clamps and pivot the actual carburetor. I may need to take the throttle linkages off again. Either way, I should be able to pivot it enough that I can get that float bowl off the bottom. Let's have a look. I'll attach that piece of fuel line to the bottom of the float bowl here. And then using a good quality GIS screwdriver, I'll open up the drain bolt located at the bottom of the float bowl. This will drain out the one ounce or so of fuel that's left in the fuel system here and allow me to tip it on its side. Next, I'll loosen off both of the bands, one on the airbox side and the other on the intake side boot, and try to rotate the carburetor. I realize quickly that the throttle linkages are in the way, so using that JIS screwdriver, I'll take out the retaining bolts that hold the cable plate onto the side of the carburetor here. I think I'll also remove the choke cable or the enrichment cable, so I'll loosen it first with a 12 millimeter wrench and then gently by hand I'll unthread that nylon nut and set the carb aside or the, the cable aside. Now I'll see how much room I have. It's not bad. I can get one of the screws out from the uh, left side of the carburetor but I do end up having to rotate to the other side to get the second cap head screw out. And here you can see that cap head screw that came with the ProCycle Jet Kit. It uses a 4mm Allen key, but I can't quite get to the other side, so I'll rotate the carburetor. Basically just push it over to the other side like this. Now on this side, I'm going to use a thumb ratchet with a 4mm Allen key. It fits in really easy, and these are a fun little tool to have in your toolbox. They get you out of a jam every once in a while. Once I remove the hardware on both sides, I will be able to remove the float bowl. Now just be careful to, when you do take it out, not to lose any hardware or the gasket that sits on there, that rubber o-ring. Next, I'll use a flat bladed screwdriver and remove the 145 jet, being aware not to lose that little brass sleeve that fits above the main jet. Once that's done, I'm gonna put the 150 back in its place now. Here's the back of my hand. It's a really terrible shot and I apologize for this. And then it's really just a matter of reassembling the float bowl, reorienting it straight up and down, and then putting everything back together. Be careful when you put the choke cable in not to over tighten it. And of course my safari tank's always a pain to get back on, but eventually I get it on and uh, let's take it out for a ride. Almost immediately when I got the bike back out onto the street, I noticed a difference in both mid-range and full throttle applications on the DR. The 150 jet seemed to be performing much better than the 145, so I took it out onto a flat stretch of highway here 
and rolled on in fourth gear. Now, it's really hard to hear it, but I'll tell you, um, when I rolled the throttle back, it actually started to decelerate exactly the way the instruction said it should. Well, that was quite a bit of difference. I can't believe stepping up one main jet size smoothed out the mid-range even more, and now when I let off off the throttle in fourth gear, the bike actually slows down. It runs really good. It does really good first gear wheelies. Not that I'm a real wheelie hog or anything like that, but it's much easier to lift the front end than it was when the bike was stock. I think it's pretty good. Let's go inside. I'll give you my summary thoughts on what I think of this jet kit. Well, that was really fun. Why don't we start by reviewing the setup that I have with this ProCycle Jet Kit. If you remember, I started with the stock, or not stock, but the suggested main jet of 145. The clip is in the fourth position and the fuel mixture screw was turned out two full turns. That was the baseline that ProCycle told us to do. I also initially had my custom air box cover on instead of drilling the top of the air box out. Initial ride, it was running way too lean. So I went back and I put the factory air box cover back on. I did not drill the top of the air box out or take out the snorkel. And when I went out and tested it, it rode really good in that configuration. However, when I tested it for the main jet leanness, it still appeared to be running lean, even though I had no additional air box holes drilled in it. Because of that, I came back and I put the 150 main jet in. I left the needle clip in the fourth position and adjusted the fuel mixture screw until the idle was nice and smooth. When I went out and rode it, the bike runs great. It has great starting in the morning. Uh, idle is crisp. The throttle response is crisp. Mid-range and, and top end really are nice. It runs good on the highway. It pulls strong right from idle all the way to the top of the rev range. I'm really, really pleased. I'm not sure why it runs so good without allowing additional air into the air box. I really don't know, but it seems to work good for me the way it's set up. It could be my elevation here in Niagara Falls. I am not 100% sure. However, you're going to have to make those adjustments yourself depending on where your bike's located and how your bike is set up. If you have aftermarket exhaust or maybe a, a k and air filter, something like that, you may need to you know, modify the tune a little bit um, as you see fit. The process is still the same. The only thing I didn't have to do was adjust the height of the needle. That's a little bit different where you take the top off and you actually pull the needle out, adjust the clip and put it back in. If you're to this point now, you already know how to do that. I don't think I need to show you how to adjust that. But the needle, the clip height of the needle really does impact your mid-range performance. So if you find it idles really good and the top ends really good, but it has a bit of a flat spot in the mid-range, you may need to either richen or lean out that needle by moving the clip up or down. The instructions tell you how to do that. What are my overall thoughts on this kit and the value? I think it comes back to what my initial goals were. And my initial goals were really just to have it start better in the morning and idle really nice and smooth. So it would be similar to what Carl's bike is. And absolutely this kit does that. It starts even this morning without choke. It, I didn't even need the choke to start this thing. And it was about six or seven degrees Celsius out. Not terribly cold, but not warm either. It idles and it uh, accelerates exactly the way I want. And so I'm happy with it. Now in terms of additional performance, the seat of my pants feel is there is more horsepower there. 
How much? I don't know. I don't have access to a dyno. And for me, it's really irrelevant. The fact that it carburates better down the low end is really what I was after. That being said, it will lift the front wheel much easier just without any clutch and hardly any preload of the suspension. It'll lift the front end now pretty, pretty easily. So I kind of find that as a great benefit. Now at $80 uh, to get it over here into Canada with all the duty and the shipping and the, and the exchange rate, I think I paid over hundred dollars for this kit. So it's not an inexpensive upgrade. However, I do feel it is worth it to make the bike easier to start and carburate much cleaner than it was in the factory state of tune. If you remember the factory needle or the factory fuel uh, mixture screw, sorry, was only about three quarters a turn out from its seat. So it was super lean. This one's probably closer still to two full turns out on the fuel screw. It really does demonstrate how lean Suzuki makes that right from the factory so it meets emission standards. Okay, well I think that wraps up today's episode. I hope you found it interesting and it wraps up the three-part episode I suppose on uh, installing the jet kit, cleaning your carburetor and ultimately tuning the ProCycle jet kit. It was a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to a good season of riding with this uh, modification. Now, if I do find there's some other information I need to provide, by all means, I'll forward that through a video. But right now, I'm quite confident in the way that it's running, and I can't wait to get out and, and actually give it a good shakedown. I really do hope that you enjoyed things today, and if you did, by all means, please leave a comment. I do read all of them. However, for now, I gotta get back to work, because you know, life just keeps on going. So I hope to see you here soon on Dino's Tinker Shed. All right, have a great day.